Hello everyone, it's Andy here from The Movement Project and today I'm going to be answering a simple question, is a vegan diet healthy? Now the reason why I thought I'd go into this topic, it seems to be gathering a lot of traction online at the moment, especially when you're looking at the amount of searches people are doing online. So I'll be going into a little bit of the research about uh, vegan diets and the effects it can have on our health, pros and cons. I also will be discussing some of the common deficiencies that sometimes people who follow a vegan diet may have and also how better to get these into your diet. I'll I will link timestamps in the description box below as always so you can skip to that section if that's something you're interested in. Now I framed the question is a vegan diet healthy because this is what most people are searching for. Are you mad at your computer? So I'm going to say this isn't probably the best way to try to ask this question. It probably would be better framed by saying, can a vegan diet be healthy? So I'm going to explain why I think framing this question in this way is better and why this isn't a simple black and white answer. Now, I was a little bit nervous about doing this video just because I know there's a lot of emotional context behind veganism itself. And I want everyone to know that I'm doing this video based on the vegan diet part of it. So not veganism as a whole. So veganism is a philosophy that believes that animals Animals shouldn't be exploited in any way. This is from things like for food, also could be for products, clothing. Like I said, I'm going to be just exploring the vegan diet aspect. I also just wanted to say that what constitutes health is very complicated and there are so many different causes of mortality and to link health and the causes of that mortality can be very difficult. So after all that, I'll go on to the research. Okay, so before I discuss some of the research or the pros and cons of a vegan diet, just want a quick premise to say these are not set in stone and these are just what we know from research at the moment there may be certain studies that I've missed I just tried to do my best to find the biggest studies that I could find and also some of the latest studies I'll put a box here so feel free to pause the video and then you can take your time to have a look through these so some of the pros are it lowers all causes of mortality reduces things like obesity diabetes cancer also um, can reduce diverticular disease so some of the cons are it can increase rates of fracture it can increase stroke it can increase B12 deficiency. So B12 deficiency can cause problems with your nervous system, maybe affecting your vision or your memory. So a vegan diet also has associations with increase in things like depression and anemia. So I included and added all these things, not as a point scoring exercise. It's just to illustrate the point that health is very complicated. And this list doesn't include everything I found. It just condensed some of the major studies and some of the conditions I found most frequent. So coming back to the question, is a vegan diet healthy? The answer to this is yes but not inherently it definitely can be if you eat a wide variety of foods you can eat bad food on any diet making it unhealthy now the reason why i said that is because i looked on google trends to see what most people are searching for when uh, looking for vegan diet topics the things that come out most common on trending subjects were things like the kfc vegan burger steak vegan slices from greg's now obviously these aren't healthy foods and if you're eating these especially as a main part of your vegan diet obviously for you a vegan diet is going to be unhealthy now there seems to be a big movement in the junk vegan diet side of things and obviously that must mean it's because there's a demand for it and this does worry me a little bit especially because a lot of us in the western world don't have a good diet and then if you're cutting out a whole food group and then replacing it with more unhealthy food it might be then more likely that you suffer from certain deficiencies in minerals and vitamins so i do believe that you can be healthy on a vegan diet i think all of us even if you're not on a vegan diet have to start considering our food more its contents and to make sure we're getting a balanced diet people from all walks of life on various different diets can be deficient in, in certain vitamins and minerals it's really important that all of us become more educated and more aware of the foods that we eat tell me what would i get if i added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood you don't know well let's try again where mr potter would you look if i asked you to find me a bezoar so I've made a list of four different things that you might want to consider if you're going vegan or if you are already vegan that you may be deficient. Now these aren't the only ones but these seem to be the main ones that people do become deficient in. So sometimes what I like to do is to write down some food groups that I know contain things that I need in my diet and then tick them off each week so I know that I've covered them. So the first one I'm going to discuss is B12 deficiency. So this is one I think most people are fairly familiar with. Now rates of B12 deficiency in studies I looked at 
ranged quite a lot. So this was from uh, 0% to 86%. Now the one I found that had 0%, the vegans uh, did in that study, they were having foods that were fortified, so that contained B12. So that's why those people had no rates of B12 deficiency. So it shows that if you do do some of these things, you can lessen your chances of being B12 deficient. So the first thing you can do is have foods that are fortified. So this means that they contain a lot of the vitamins and minerals that you need. Also that you, so you're more likely to absorb them. You should aim that these fortified foods has roughly around about 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams for each serving. So the second thing you can do is make sure that you have one supplement that has 25 milligrams. And thirdly, you can have one supplement of roughly about 1000 milligrams twice a week. So the reason why it's good to get it often is because sometimes B12 isn't really absorbed very well. So it's good to get it from a variety of sources and also sometimes more than we would generally need um, or our recommended daily allowance. B12 is an essential vitamin that our body needs. So the second thing you might want to get is iron. Now there are two forms, heme iron and non-heme iron. So heme iron is normally from animal sources. So you get non-heme iron from plant sources. This version of iron is less well absorbed in our gut. So we have to make sure we're getting a lot of this in our diet. So a good way to try to absorb more of the iron in your gut is to combine it with vitamin C. Now you can do this by taking a supplement. So I recommend just having your iron rich foods with foods that you know that contain high vitamin C. These are normally things like fruits, certain vegetables. Just combine these two and you'll absorb more of the iron. So just a note that tea and coffee lowers your ability to uptake iron in your gut. So make sure that you are separating these from your meals, especially when you're having meals that you're trying to get more your iron from. So I'll put a few examples here. So pause the video. These foods combine the iron and vitamin C so you can maximize your ability to uptake iron in your diet. Also, just a few more here. These are other foods that contain a lot of iron. So the third thing is omega-3. Now you don't have to get this as a fish oil. You can get it with certain microalgae that contain high levels of omega-3. So omega-3 is so important for so many different processes in our body. This is something you really wanna make sure that you're getting um, on a weekly, if not daily basis. Also, you can make sure that your diet has ALA in. This is a form of omega-3. You can get this from things like chia seeds, linseeds, walnuts. So the last one is something called Called choline. So the reason why I added this onto the list is because it's something actually I'd not heard of before. And after doing some research and some digging on this, it's such an important substance uh, as a neurotransmitter and involved in so many processes in our body. Also, when looking at the different sources and how much they contain of choline, it's really hard to get the recommended daily allowance of this in your diet. So the organization that sets these recommended daily allowances said that this possibly is an overestimation or a safe option. So if you do get less less in your diet, it's not no reason to panic, but obviously if we can increase our chances of consuming this, so we absorb more of it, it's gonna be really beneficial. So I made a note of a few different foods that contain this. So the recommended daily allowance for an average size man is 550 milligrams per day, and for women it's 425. So I made a list of a few foods that, so that if you're on a vegan diet that you can try to eat these and how much they contain. These were things like a half a cup of mushrooms contain roughly about 58 milligrams of choline, two two tablespoons of peanut butter contain 11 milligrams, one cup of chopped broccoli, 62 milligrams, one cup of soya milk, 57 milligrams, and one cup of tofu, 70 milligrams. So that's about 258 milligrams. So that's half of what you would actually need if you're an average sized man. And those are some of the foods that had the highest concentrations. So this shows how difficult it is to get this in your recommended daily allowance. So some of the main foods that contain this is unfortunately animal products. Just a last note on choline, I'll put a link in the description box of a great website I found that had loads of different recipes that try to show you ways to optimize your diet to increase the amount of choline that you're eating in your diet. Okay so just to sum up I definitely think that you can have a healthy diet when you follow a vegan diet and I really understand that people follow this diet due to ethical reasons and I really sympathize with these people and it's something I feel very strongly with especially the way that we've treated animals and we've exploited them for our own needs. Personally I've really tried to start reducing my overall meat content. I've done this by doing meat free Mondays so a diet consisting of high level of meat consumption has definitely been linked or associated with adverse health problems. Ultimately, a healthy diet is a healthy diet. And what I mean by this is that technically you could live on KFC vegan burgers, Oreo cookies all day, and technically you'd be vegan, but you wouldn't be healthy. So something I aspire to is having a whole food diet that's mainly plant-based, but does have some meat thrown in there. And I really hope that some of you can implement some of these things into your daily life and really improve your health. Also, just remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.